So, here we go. Uh, good evening once again, listeners, and it's time for our special guest on the Tony Topping Show. We've been talking about psychic espionage. Uh, I've been getting the usual grief here, there, and everywhere uh, due to the fact that people try to forget that I've been on the sharp end of things. I'm a, as I keep saying to people, I'm a bit of a Jason Bourne trying to find my identity with all my paranormal experiences. I don't profess to be psychic in any way, but I have had extreme paranormal experiences that I'm trying to get to the bottom of, so that's me. And interestingly enough, we are joined by Irene, and we're joined by Mark, and uh, Irene has written a book called The Psychic Spy, which is a, a work of fiction, so we are led to believe, cue the James Bond movie. And there's, uh, well, dear listener, we'll cut to the chase, there's lots of sex in it. And uh, there you go, lots of sex, more sex, and sex galore. Uh, No, there isn't, actually. It's a very serious read. It's a very serious and compelling read about MI6 operations in remote viewing, which is a work of fiction uh, that has been written. But it gives some insights for those of us who've studied this subject into what's going on. Uh, It has been quite a read. It's quite a courageous work, and it actually highlights the brutal mindset um, that people go through when they are doing this kind of work. It's not very nice at times, and I think it does take a toll um, on the people. Anyway, I've yatted on. I welcome Mark Johnson and Irene to the show. Hello. Hello. Hi, Tony. How are you tonight? Hello, Mark. Are you with us there? Yes, I am. Thank you for having us on the show. No, no problems at all. And Mark, you are are Special Agent Mark Johnson, uh, (laughs) and you are... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that's rather apt isn't it no you're actually a publisher aren't you mark and and you uh what i'm interested to know about is uh how you met uh, irene i'm getting confused there's a character in it called eileen and there's irene who wrote it uh, and it's causing me no end of confusion i kid you not anyway how did you meet um irene well how i did met... this all come about mark I, i'm interested to know well i met uh Irene, <laughs> Irene Allen Block. Uh, when uh, I was introduced to her as being the uh, the head of Spirit Rescue International, and I, being a, a paranormal investigator myself, uh, we got together. I joined her group, and I've been working with them for a while. And I've been very impressed with her background and experiences. And she told me about this book idea that she was working on. And uh, she started sending me chapters, and I instantly fell in love with this book. So I helped her to edit it and finish the book, and together we used that to launch our new publishing company, Glenn and Ty. And uh, The Psychic Spy is our premier book, and it just uh, was released last uh, week. Yeah, indeed, indeed. So, and the um, I think we'll find that MI6 are Britain's foreign intelligence uh, service. They're in charge of gathering intelligence on um, on foreign um, foreign yeah. espionage targets, aren't they? And the thing with that is, when the British public look at uh, remote viewing and psychic spying, they'll see uh, an MOD. Uh, thing regarding this where the Ministry of Defence turn around and go, oh, there's not much going on with that. When, in fact, this book gives some very interesting insights into what was actually going on with Britain regarding this. And I know the founder of Remote Viewing, uh, Ingo Swan, in the United States, discovered that uh, MI5 had been using psychic spies from 1900. In fact, the equivalent of MI6 had actually been using psychic spies under the first kind of foreign espionage service in Britain under Sir Francis Walsingham. Uh, and so the, the, these these kind of things, the, what, what amazed me in the book, uh, Mark, is the uh, the bit to do with the Falkland Islands and the way uh, the, the remote viewing unit was uh, was deployed during that. Now, I didn't know anything about that, and I found it absolutely, uh, absolutely fascinating. Is it true to say that uh, it's doing well at the moment? How did you find? Were you astounded by the material in it, including every position in the Karma Sutra? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's well, steamy, that's, listeners. It's really steamy. Yeah, let's just say that you know, there's a little bit in the book. Experiences. Yes. Yeah. It's yeah. a little bit in the book for everyone, and uh, you know, the, there's adventure, there's romance, uh, there's uh, political intrigue, and again, with each chapter, Irene, when she would send it over to me, 
uh, I was just astounded and enthralled by this material. And I agree with you, the, 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 the chapter on the Falkland Islands uh, campaign was mm. was particularly interesting to me because mm. of how uh, incredible detailed it was and how it brought you in on an emotional level to what was going on and mm. and bringing out a, a little known side to that conflict that the, the rest of the world and me as a as an American and not as exposed to it as you over there so mm. it just it was a fascinating fascinating read and Irene just did a fantastic job with it. Mm, yes, it certainly looks like it, and it certainly looks as if the British technique was uh, was based on like a an outward bounding remote viewing technique, an out of body remote viewing technique, where the Americans based it on like a a subliminal zip file type uh, ideogram um, well, technique you've to to remember that Eileen was trained by a Russian. So was she? Yes, she was. Ah, right. Now that's that's interesting because from what 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 I was told, the character in the book was trained by somebody called D. Now, have I missed something no. there? No. No. He was uh, uh, head, head of MI6. Right. Order. Right. Yeah. I thought in the James Bond I'd movie it was M. Today, or M was in James Bond, D. I oh. could hardly see, could I, or M. So we, <laughs> I chose D. <laughs> and you, chose, and you, chose, you chose D. Now, have you, have, are you a fan of the spy movies then, uh, Irene? Are you, uh, are you a fan of... of, of uh, the Bourne trilogies and John Le Carre and stuff like that. No, Brian, Brian, my husband, he, he is. He loves uh, he? Jason. Yeah, and he's always got it on the television, so I go in the other room. Have you, um, seen, have you seen any of the Jason Bourne uh, movies at all? No, I don't watch television. You don't uh, watch television? I don't watch television. I don't read the newspapers. I don't do any of that sort of thing right, because no, of my remote viewing. So... Right, I no, I, I get you. Uh, you just distorted. Then I think we've still got you online. Yeah, we have. Yeah, no, that, that, that's okay. The reason why I say that is because prevailing throughout the book is this subtle uh, frog in boiling water, subtle turning up the heat of pressure on the person in the remote viewing unit. And I know that Ingo Swan's team were under immense pressure. And to look mm. at Ingo Swan speaking, you would think he was a gentleman, but he, he, he um, well, he probably was, but he sadly passed away now. But the pressure was uh, immense. What kind of pressure is your character under who you wrote about uh, in the book in terms of, uh, it seems to me, would you agree in saying that there's a gentle rise of pressure on them? It all seems like a jolly jape. Girl in a hey. travel agency... That yeah, they, were, they yeah. were gentle with her in the beginning, but as time got on, yeah, the pressure really turned up. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 you know, she had, to, she had to produce the good sort of thing. Yes. And that was it. The, and, yeah, that... uh, the Russian that actually trained her, can we, what did I call him in the book again? I can't remember now. Matthew. 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 That was the, um, he actually, in the book, he, he was trained in Russia as a, a psychic spy. He came over to escape, got over to England, was taken on by the MI6 and trained the team from there. And, How, um, why, did they, um, why did they recruit a, a Russian then? Uh, I mean, John Le Carre aptly names MI6 as the circus. Why did they... <laughs> Well, he's a double. Who's that? In the work of fiction, he's a double agent, was he? No, no, he wasn't a double agent. He, you know, right. he. Uh, the, 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 I can't. I can't. I can't explain how I explained it now because I haven't read the book for a long time. Uh, I, I, I can interject because I think I've reread and edited the book so often that you know I think yeah. I know it better than Irene. But, um, you know, he he was a, a defector. And came over okay. to England and was immediately uh, implemented by MI6. And right. I, I think it's no secret that the the Russian psychic programs were far more advanced than <laughs> what the UK and the US had mm. at the time. And they definitely – this Matthew character mm. was so well-trained and mm. very excellent at what he did. And he helped mm. to mm. raise the bar and increase uh, mm. the level of uh, – intelligence mm. within MI6 and also finding talent like the Eileen Evans character and training her to come up to his level. Sorry, I say again. 
more or less his level, she would never be as good as him. She'd never be as good as him. It's interesting because the um, the Americans use this uh, ideogram target reference technique. And the Russians used um, a contour brainwave technique, like a tuning fork uh, technique. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. And yeah. you... Um, and I tell you, does... that hurts. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Does it hurt on the left-hand side of the brain by any chance when applied? Yes. Oh, I'm on the right yeah, I, track. I tell you what, it feels, like, it feels like the whole of your brain is actually vibrating. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's uh, uh, yeah. so so painful, but you know, your your body does adjust to it. It, yeah. it does adjust to it over a period of time. But yeah. the problem is, it's your eardrums will they vibrate as well at the same time? As well. Can you imagine a glass when someone's singing high pitch? What that goes like, and then it mm-hmm. shatters. Mm-hmm. It's very mm-hmm. similar to that. That's what the feeling is. You think you think the whole of your head is just gonna. Mm. Well, I'm talking too much, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's 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 interesting because the um the Russian technique, the what 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 is quoted as being uh, the brainwave contour technique. Although if I look on the internet, I can see everything there is to do with the uh, the ideogram technique used in coordinate remote viewing. Yeah. Uh, I can see everything there is with Courtney Brown's SRV and David Morehouse's technique. But when it comes to as they were known, as I've said previously, Troop Ten Thousand and Free, which is the Russian um, KGB unit uh, responsible for remote viewing. There isn't a technique anywhere. It's not publicised. Uh, and it's interesting how secrets uh, in the book, MI6 were covering their tracks, using something called a subspace aspect. Now, I'm intrigued by that one. Uh, oh. I've, I've heard that term before. What, what's, what is that different to coordinate remote viewing, so using the subspace? But you were using ideogram techniques as well, weren't you, in, uh, in the techniques? So, so it read in the book. But what's the difference? Is, uh, what is a subspace well, really, aspect? In those days, it was called the soul, space, soul, side, soul side. Right. The subspace side, you know, it, that's what all it means is the soul side. The soul side, yes? Yeah. Right, yeah, and and it's the it's the soul that's projected rather than the actual subconscious, which is the key difference, I think, between the yeah. the Russian, uh, the US, and uh, and the Brits. Get a lot of feeling of um, biolocation. Bio yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Places at the same time. Yeah. Yes, indeed, and 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 the pressure that is. Uh, that is on when when I was reading this book was remarkable. In fact, I thought it was. Uh, I thought at times it was tragic, frankly. That how I mean, believe it or not, listeners. Um, Irene uh, has a big organisation called Spirit Rescue uh, International. She has uh, a couple of pets. Uh, what is it, Bo Del Boy, Brownie? <laughs> no, oh. Del Boy Boy. See, yes, Denzel. Yes, named after the only fools and horses characters. Yes. And the girls are Tazzy, the Tasmanian Devil, Pippa and Poppy. That's it. Yeah, I've got it right now. Yeah, and, and they're, they're acutely psychic. But my question to you is this. In reading the book, it, it's, it, it's a tragedy to see things we would consider um, sacred, like the spiritual realm, being used as some sort of warfare tool. How do you feel about that one? I, I'm not really happy. I've got to admit, I'm not really happy about that. No. I don't think that any poor souls on the other side or anything like that, you know, or anything. No, I don't. I, no, I'm not happy about that at all. No, no, that that it can be that it can be used in that way, and that's what that's what's clearly highlighted in the book is the tragedy and the constant the constant harrying and pressure that the character in the book is put on there to do this, do that, and assassinate someone psychically as well. Uh, and that 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 in the book is vividly um, vividly written. Actually, I found it well, tragic. You know they've done that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I know. I know they do it. They do it all the time. But it's to. Was there not something in the book to do with somebody in Turkey? Is that correct? Or, have I, or did I hear that from another source? No. That was. Uh, there was an article that was on the online about a week or two ago. Yeah. Where they were claiming that somebody in Turkey was assassinated via a psychic assassin. Yes. And so it's right. still in the news that people claim. And you know, with these types of assassinations, there's it's almost the perfect crime. There's no way you, if they could stop somebody's heart 
then it looks like they've just died of a heart attack or natural mm. causes. Mm. And nobody mm. would be suspicious. There's no chemicals in the blood, no open wounds. It's just that they drop dead. Mm. Yeah, mm. Per- perfect uh, assassination. But you know, Neela done that. And she wasn't the only one. She'd done it with the frog. And from there, they took her even further doing it. Yeah, so, so really... And she, what, what... Actually, she actually died herself of a heart attack. What, sorry, is, you've lost. You've lost me. Who who died? The the, the lady. The Nina lady Kulagina. at the book. Bo- Kulagina. Nina Kulagina. Right. right. Yes. Yeah. She right. tested yeah. it out on a frog. She killed the frog, and then this um, scientist, this skeptical scientist, didn't believe her. So she she was put to the test with him. He got to the yeah. point where he felt like his chest was going to cave in, or you know. Typical yeah. symptoms of a heart attack. His breathing right. got bad, and the medical staff that was. Uh, in the room at the time, had to stop the experiment. Right. Okay. Well, she went even further, and she was a psychic assassin. You apparently, apparently, yeah. using yeah. these uh, things. But after she died, you see, then Alaviva came along. Alaviva Gondova, and she was far better than Nina. Right. Right. And uh, she's so... the foe to Eileen in the book. Yeah. Yeah. The one uh... after Eileen. And so uh, I, the, the bit about the uh, the bit about the the Falklands War is a particularly fascinating chapter in the book, uh, because uh, Britain is a very secretive uh, nation, isn't it? It doesn't really uh, it doesn't really talk much about that. And uh, there's also the bit to do with the tracking yeah, hostages. Anything out of Britain about remote viewing? <laughs> yeah, no. Well, there is there isn't anything available, and and this book does give some valuable uh, insights into into a hidden into the hidden area that uh, that went on in the in the area of remote viewing. And it, what I'm thinking is the 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 Falkland Islands. Bit where they were, where you were tracking, uh, or rather, where the fictional character was tracking, uh, tracking targets. How successful was that? How successful? Yeah. How how successful? Well, it, well it, you know, it, it um, helped an awful lot with the actual. Um, well, you know, how can I say it? Um, the information that was given. I can't Go on, say. Hook, you're all right. The information that was given, yeah. Well, the way I've lost the words. <laughs> uh, I'll I'll, I'll cut in here for you, Irene. The way that yeah, she, she the way that she wrote it in the book yeah. is these types of techniques were an invaluable tool that they used to to track ship movements. Uh, yes. You know what what the Argentinian fleet was doing uh, coming in through uh, certain areas. You know, yeah. giving it and sending that information out to the troops in the field to prepare for attacks. Um, you know, because there was, and, and you have to keep in mind that these types of techniques are part of an overall um, intelligence gathering. Everything being used from satellite data to uh, troops on the ground, boots on the ground, collecting information. And, you know, they compare what, you know, Eileen, the character of Eileen in the book, what she was able to read and pick up on is validated by people who are there. And, uh, you know, it was interesting, and this is one of the fascinating things about it is that the the character is able to look not only at what's happening in real time, but also looking in towards future events, so that they could plan ahead on how to when the when the fleet was coming in from the north, and that actually did happen, although. Uh, they actually came in a little bit later because there was a weather delay. So even with looking in the future, yeah, there's always a slight possibility that it may not be a hundred percent because the future is still uncertain. Right. Yeah. Yes. I get you. Well, it's not. It's not. It's certainly not written in. Uh, it written in stone. But I mean, what was the what was the throwback with the uh, with the character in your opinion, uh, Irene, uh, being exposed to all this um, psychic projection? Uh, what what other what other events perhaps you didn't write in the book happened that you could perhaps share with the listeners where where the character was not exposed to? What, what, I mean, what things did you not write in? I think that happened to her due to exposure. That's what. Sorry, lovey. That's all for the next book. Tyler. I know, but our listeners want to know. Don't do that to us. We we need to know. Give us an example of of what perhaps um, the exposure to all this, but apart from post traumatic stress disorder, what? That was uh, really what good. Sorry, say again. Post post traumatic stress disorder was really that is really bad. 
Yeah, it was really bad. Yeah. Uh, how many people were in the unit suffering from that then, according, in the fictional uh, book? How many people were, were suffering from that then? Well, out of the viewers, every now and then, they'd, uh, there'd be one cart sort of sent for counselling sort of thing. But I think with Eileen, she was what she went through at the very end, yeah. she, she had it worse than anyone. Right, right, mm. yeah. Uh, and the thing, the thing is, is that from is what she, you're telling me, she from was the, trash. Hmm? Sorry. She, no, I was just saying what what you're telling me uh, from the book is that uh, even to this day, the character in the book is still hunted by the KGB. Is that yeah. correct? Or what is the KGB? Even to this day, she's still closely monitored because due to due to activities over there, it's uh, it really, really is dear Lister, like some like a, a John Lee Carey book that deals with psychic spying. It's quite it's quite unbelievable what uh, what the character is subjected to. Started out as a young girl in a travel agent's, um, and uh, and it's very as I say, it's very vivid. Is the uh, is the contrast uh, as to how it all develops so that she ends up uh, being traumatized by the things that she she is. Asked to do, um, I mean, Mark. What's your take on it? Whereby you think that whereby a spiritual realm, what we consider sacred, is used as a tool of warfare in your experience? Because you you're involved in radio and the paranormal industry in general. Uh, what, what do you think of it uh, when they're using remote viewing uh, for offensive purposes, using these techniques? Well, well, first of all, real quick before I mention that, I just want to comment on the fact that you, the one of the things that I really loved about Irene's book is the fact that. Her writing and explaining how these techniques work and how this character went through what she did is so down to earth and believable. And, you know, mm. she doesn't write about the new age woo woo stuff that a lot of authors will go for and the, or the, you know, the, the shock value or whatnot. She tells it like it is. And, uh, I think that's what makes you really care about what happens to Eileen, the character throughout the course of the book and how, being exposed to some of the horrors she witnessed, you know, that post-traumatic stress, knowing she's hunted, uh, you know, it's very traumatic. And going back to your question on, you know, using psychic abilities, uh, of, of course, I think that goes against. From what is it in the book, uh, Irene, that you're most passionate about when you wrote it? What is what is it the thing that, that actually uh, leaps out in front of you that you really really liked or are really passionate about in what you wrote about the experiences of uh, Eileen? <laughs> the sex parts. <laughs> the sex parts, right. We'll go into that. Yeah, no problems. We'll, we'll go into that because uh, we need to... All the time cause... I was writing them, I was embarrassed. <laughs> don't, 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 no, don't worry about that bloody hellfire. Right, hang on. Uh, just see Nick... Uh, yeah. I was totally embarrassed by them. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Real quick, uh, Tony, before we get to the next question, uh, yeah. when you get an Irene, uh, can I real briefly finish the question that you asked me before we got cut off? Yes, it was about, wasn't it? It was about the uh, using spiritual stuff yes. for a warfare. Yeah, because uh, that's anything, when I got cut you off. Know, you, I mean, you no can cut stone this. is unturned, is it really? It's quite disgusting, I think, but, but anyway. Yeah. Uh, so let me let, let me, me just answer that real quick, and then you can answer the thing with Nick. Oh, um, right, Chuck. Right, here we go. Okay. I, I personally think it's repugnant. I think that you know spiritual gifts are gifts, and uh, you know the spiritual realm is not to be used in a negative manner. I mean, not just by by governments using it to spy on one another or commit assassinations or manipulate people. I mean, there are all aspects of the dark side of the paranormal out there. You know, from people dabbling in black arts to you know voodoo to whatever. But at the same time. You know, it's supposed to be used for light, and it's supposed to be used for helping people here. Yeah. That's my personal opinion of it. So, yeah, I, I mean, I'm not a big fan of it. No, no, no. If you look at Joseph Matmon Eagle, uh, and if you look at the guys involved in the Russian side of things as well during this, they had major spiritual awakenings. I think uh, Skip Atwater, who was in charge of something called Project Gondola Wish, which was used for, um, I think, offensive psychic operations, he had a massive spiritual awakening from all this. Uh, and, uh, of course, the Russians developed something um, called New Cosmology from all this. Uh, yet, uh, Irene, we don't... See it, this in the book. Certainly, if you've got any gifts, it does enhance them. It really yeah. does enhance any gifts yeah. you've got. But what, what I'm saying is, in your book, you don't see anybody from, uh, from let's say, your section of uh, of MI6 uh, or whatever in the in the fictional. You don't you don't see them having these spiritual awakenings like the Americans and Russians did. It's all kind of dirty, nasty. 
um, pressure all the way. You really feel it. You really feel the the pressure um, coming coming off the page at you. It's uh, I feel for the character. I really do, and what they were subjected to, uh, because it's that mindset that that people are not prepared for. I certainly wasn't when it all happened to me. And interestingly enough, just for the listeners' um, interest, uh, there's actually a full version of the Karma Sutra in the book, isn't there, Irene? <laughs> There's some, there's some real. It uh, is a bit naughty in places. It is, isn't it? it? There's some. It is a bit. It is a bit naughty in places. But I think what it, what it shows once again is the, is the, the love between two people uh, um, set against the backdrop of of immense pressure and one person not knowing what the other, um, what the other person is doing. Because it's interesting that it, she was recruited as a young girl working in a travel agency, and then the story actually, actually escalates from there. Uh, Nick Redfern actually give you a tremendous. A, a real good write-up uh, with it. He enjoyed it very much. Uh, they did, did research on Nick Redfern. Um, yeah, and, he, he uh, put it on his blog yesterday. Yeah, yeah. This, this is this all is excited absolutely... about. Thank you, Nick. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Is it um, is it true to say then that, that, that what what really kind of like um, floated your boat when you were writing it? Then what really what what were you really passionate about when you were when you were writing it? What was the bit that you really enjoyed writing? Actually, it wasn't so much about enjoying writing it. It went the opposite way with me in a lot of ways. I became down, depressed. Um, really? It brought back a lot of memory. Right. Right. Yeah. It, uh, what is interesting to note is that coming towards the end of the book, uh, the character uh, still in, is still involved in a special unit that deals yeah. with uh, bizarre national security issues that may uh, that may come up. Is that is that still ongoing then? That according to your sources, is that still happening? Yeah. Yeah, it's still it's still going on. What kind of what kind of things do they have to deal you know, with? Say so you can't every, tell. It, I don't I don't care what anyone says. In every country, right? Yes. What with the Indian um, Asians and one thing or another into remote viewing now, every country has their remote viewers. They are picking it up. They are improving on it. They've got to keep on top of every other country. Yeah. Yeah. So well, it, they can deny it as much as they like. They've got remote viewers. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, where do you think the American projects went then? I mean, what we've got on the Internet at the moment is this nice fluffy thing that the public see regarding uh, the drawing of targets by subliminal technique. And it's all very nice and loads of documents classified, declassified about that. But where do you think it's all gone? Because, my God, it's gone somewhere. I think it's gone a lot deeper than what they're actually saying on the net. Where do you think it's gone, uh, Irene? I've got no idea. I don't keep in with the American side of no, no, but you know, it, I know they had no. some brilliant remote viewers out there. Absolutely yeah. brilliant. You know, I can and tell I you, speaking, sure they're still still working. A lot of them. Right. Hmm? Speaking from the American side, being over mm-hmm. here, I'm going to tell you, you know, the one thing that the American government has been very good at is poo-pooing anything that has to do with psychic development. They've always come out and say, oh, yeah, we, we've uh, experimented with it. It didn't work. And, you know, and our yeah. media is yeah. all too happy to go along with it. If you talk to the normal everyday person out here, they think psychic abilities are bunk. That it's not true, that it's charlatans and people trying to pull one over on an unsuspecting public. So it's a perfect cover. They're doing it. They know it exists. But yet they go right along with what the media, you know, and the media I personally think is in their back pockets, you know, to downplay those types of abilities here so that the general public not only doesn't believe it, they don't even want to look into it. If they hear anything, they laugh it off. It's a perfect cover. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's an it's an absolute perfect cover. Um, I agree. Uh, there is a wall of secrecy around it because it's gone far deeper than what they're letting on. Coupled with the fact that there are very dark esoteric forces out there, very dark that are also probably using this for wrongful ends. Okay, all right. Yeah. Well, f- for the for the listeners' uh, interest, what we've uh, what what was interesting was the um, as I said earlier, there was a, it's called Project Blue Star, or, or rather, should I say the Blue Star? Uh, it's codename Blue. What is uh, is it Project? Blue Star, uh, Irene. Yeah, uh, Project Code, Code, Code Name Blue Star. 
Codename Boomstar, that's it. And oddly enough, the, the Russians, um, uh, there was a, there's a site uh, on the internet that indicated that the recent arrests of the Russian spy ring uh, a few years back were to do with the fact that they were all, um, they were all psychics under the name the Blue Star Group, which is, uh, which is very interesting considering that the character in the book, Matthew, uh, is Russian. I find that just fascinating. Um, I, I, I don't know whether that's a coincidence or not. And, and before we went to air, uh, Irene's doggies were going off. Um, and one wonders, you know, it's it's a strange world. Is is all this? Did as a matter of interest, Irene? Did uh, did the um, remote viewing team have a monitor like the Americans did, uh, describing and directing and trying to, uh, so, you know, sometimes. gain better information? Sometimes, in, yeah. In the, yeah, some, sometimes, yeah. Uh, either Caroline in the book monitored, or it was um, Matthew himself that monitored. But then. No. As the book progressed and the uh, Eileen and Matthew became a, a separate team to the rest of them, right? A more, they were more elite viewers, uh, viewers sort of thing. Uh, they worked on their own. I get you. I, Except I get through, you. through the through the Falklands, then um, what, uh, what? Caroline would monitor one, and what was the name of the other character I had? Mark. Uh, Caroline and Sandra. Sandra, with my, yeah, Sandra with uh, one to the other. Just out of interest, then, was there a lot of problems with um, with front end loading and projection from the monitor of what that what they thought the target yeah. might be? There wasn't. That's interesting. So you weren't actually picking anything up uh, no from front the monitor loading at all. Nothing. Oh, that's interesting because the Americans had a hell of a job on with uh, with all that, with telepathic overlay and front end load and uh, and all that kind of thing. It didn't happen with you guys though in, in the in no. the fictional. No, absolutely, no. absolutely amazing. It really is fascinating. It, re- it really is. There's a there's a paragraph in the um, in the book where uh, which I find disturbing. Uh, actually, where you're the fictional character that you're written about um, is tasked to kill someone. And um, I found that all very disturbing, that you were a young girl in a travel agency uh, that is recruited, the character in the book, and they go through, it goes through all this, and the pressure is built up to the point where she's going to kill somebody. Is he a KGB man? Is that correct? Uh which one? I think she kills a couple in the book, doesn't she? Yeah, she? it's yeah, it's the bit where we're in uh, where it, it, they've got the false documents and and uh, oh, well, they, you know. You, you, is you, it the you, one where she forces him into the road in front of a lorry? Yeah, it's it's the one where where he crosses the road near a lamp post. Mm. Yeah, I, yeah. I, the idea really... was for him to be killed in the first place, but she didn't know. Yeah, in, yeah that... the character in the book didn't know that. She thought she was out there to. Uh, kind of read his mind sort of thing. Yes, and, uh, that's, that's right. The, the that, real and, task and was to kill him. Yeah, yeah, that's right, and it, and it goes through um, vivid detail as to what that uh, as to what the character in the book uh, Eileen uh, is uh, is going through, and uh, the, I'd just like to read a read a paragraph uh, where uh, where this happened. It's it's very it just makes an interesting uh, read. Uh, for, what we got, listener, is a young girl that has been recruited in a travel agency and has been developed to a certain point where I'm thinking as I'm reading it that she's becoming a remote viewer and we're all nice and fluffy looking at targets and then all of a sudden the dynamics change when they're asking her to go that one bit further and uh, do the deed and and kill someone by psychic influencing. Uh, commonly the Americans referred to it as eight ability. Did you just re- refer to the character and your sources? Did, did they refer to that as uh, just remote influence? or psychic influencing. There was no fancy code name to it or anything like that. No, no, fancy code no, no, it was just plain and simple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let me just let me just read this uh, this this bit here that was uh, that is interesting. Um, you buy a lamp post. You're in a street. Uh, you've gone through all this, and it, uh, what what is interesting is is you're a young girl. Uh, the character has been a young girl who's been developed through all this process, to which um, the world know no, knows nothing about all this. Britain. This is the first time I've seen anything about Britain's involvement in all this, which makes it equally interesting. Um, and uh, people you have trusted 
throughout the book, it, it, your character as trusted, uh, are now telling you to, uh, to do this. Here's a little uh, paragraph. As I spoke, I noticed a change come over his face, and his next words shocked me to the core. Take him out, Eileen, he whispered fiercely. Do it now. What? That, that's not my instructions. I'm telling you, take him out. If you don't, then I have instructions to do it myself, and then we will both be in serious trouble. Now do it now before it's too late. He grabbed my arm and shook me. Uh, there's a Russian wording there, not sure. God damn it, do it, he cried out. I was shaking as I focused on the man as he stood next to the busy road. A large, heavy lorry was approaching, and I forced his mind with all my will. His face seemed to go blank for the briefest moment before he walked straight out in front of the lorry without looking. The screech of brakes shrilled through my ears, and I thought my head would explode. I had a sickening thud as the lorry hit him squarely, sending him flying several feet forward to land on the hard asphalt. I closed my eyes and screwed up my face with the pain of it. Come, let us get closer, said Piter. People had ran out in the road to see if there was anything they could do, as Piter pushed his way through the crowd with me in close pursuit. We reached the man to find him unconscious, blood running from cuts to his face. He was still breathing, but only just... Pito turned and whispered in my ear, Stop his heart! I didn't know what else to do. A crowd had gathered around the injured man, and I could hear the sirens in the distance getting closer. The window of opportunity was closing quickly, and I felt Pito's anxiety heighten with each passing section. We were, we were being told again. I focused on the part of the man's brain that controls the electrical impulses sent to the heart and stopped them cold. He took one final breath and then was still. Unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. And and that for me is the um, is the kind of the the mindset and insight into the mindset that actually goes on with this. Which, uh, as a matter of interest, Mark, if I could just bring you in, do you think that people who do this are psychopaths? No, not at all. I think <clears throat> true psychopaths would have an issue with being able to develop their psychic abilities to this part because. To this level, I think there's something within their brains that is not in tune. They're very cold, motionless, where these people that were recruited into these programs were brought in because they did show um, uh, the abilities of having these psychic abilities. And, you know, most of these people who have psychic abilities are very empathic. They're very emotional. They tune into other emotions where a psychopath is totally devoid of emotion, uh, at least uh, in terms of having empathy for other people. And uh, it's that's why I think in the terms of the character Eileen coming in, being groomed, being shown, oh, you're just going to be reading and taking these, you know, looking at these situations and gathering information and intelligence, but they build her up over time mm -hmm. to get her to the point where then suddenly she's thrust into having to kill somebody and not mm -hmm. being prepared for it, but not mm -hmm. having a choice. Mm, mm, mm. It's, it, how do you feel about that, Irene, uh, reading that back to you? Um, I was a little bit fast on my reading there, but it, it'll do the job. Um, it, there's room for improvement on it. But, you know, how how do you feel about it when you hear that? What what do you feel goes through your mind? I thought you all read it very well, actually, to tell you the truth. Uh, Sorry. It kind of shook me up. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 yeah. it was... It's difficult. It's, it's, it's it, diff yeah. It's kind of brings everything I, I, back um, emotionally and. Yes. Do, do, yeah. Does the does the person concerned? Uh, do, what is the the aftermath of it to, for them? Do, do they have to live with this? Obviously, what what is the uh, oh, what did anger. they go through? Anger. Total anger. Yeah. Afterwards, because she'd been she'd been duped by them. You know, she'd been used. Yes. She felt yeah. used. Um, she was she was really angry. Yeah, yeah, really, really angry about that. Yeah, yeah. And she felt betrayed. Everything, everything, everything just went. You know, and uh, even when I was writing it, it it was all there. All that betrayal, everything was there. Yeah, it's, it wasn't it wasn't Anger. a very, uh, pleasant situation to deal with, and uh, to me, it's as if um, exploitation was that. As a matter of interest, do you did the source tell you how much they were uh, they were paid um, as a matter of interest for this work, 
or what? Because I get the impression that the, that the person being written about isn't working for MI6 as like in the context of George Smiley would be, but has been recruited as an asset. Uh, well, is the source an asset or is she an actual agent? There's a difference, isn't there? Uh, yeah, there is a difference. Uh, she was an agent at the time. She was an agent, yeah. That's, uh, that's now very, she's very, more an asset. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's very interesting. I'll edit this bit out when I'm talking as now. As far as right? being paid, do they yeah. ever pay very much? Not a lot, you know. <laughs> There's another interesting bit here about the remote viewing uh, where you were having a, G, uh, a dream. Um, let me just, I'll edit all this out as I'm talking now, but there's a, there's a dream, isn't there, where, um, the guy in the water, which I found also on page 68, that I found absolutely incredible. Uh, now this you saw in the remote viewing session, is that correct? Yeah. Uh, and the dream of the ship. The dream, that was the dream. Right. Right. Yeah. The character uh, was... Eileen in the book, when she went home after during the Falkland Island Wars, yeah. you know, she was at home and then she had a dream that night and that which took her back to the remote viewings and uh, saw that that man, that young man in the water. Yeah, uh, he re I reached down to grab onto him, but our hands did not meet. Is that a dream? That's not a remote viewing session. That happened. That that so so that was that a, an actual dream or was that a remote it was viewing a dream. session? It was, that was no, a dream. It was in the session, it was a dream. Right. Okay. So it was a dream. So uh, interestingly enough, then I'll, I'll talk again now. The 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 listener, I'm interested to know in in view of all this uh, remote viewing that, that that the source was actually doing the the character in the book Eileen. What kind of um, kind of dreams and other associated things did she suffer from? Because there was obviously some sort of uh, throwback and perhaps no consideration for the mental impact that this that this would have uh, on you. And surely uh, the management who were in charge of you would have would have realised that, uh, that there would have been a mental impact affecting performance. Did they have no idea whatsoever how to deal with that then? Sorry, who had no uh, idea? To, to you, in exposing you to this... Uh, or exposing the, the character, should I say, who's been written about in the book. Did they have any idea at all of the mental impacts uh, that, that, that would just no, not she, was, she kept it quiet. She kept a hell of a lot of it quiet, and she only yeah. spoke about it to the people she felt she could trust. She, but, had but this, if, uh, she just didn't want to go into counselling. I get you, but if she was traumatised by the events that they've done, how does that affect the, how did that infect the intelligence product? Because the Russians had quality control systems that, that, that I understand were yeah. second to none, and the Americans did. But with, with the UK, how did that data um, affect? Um, with this how did that character? She had to put everything aside. You know, whatever happened to her, she'd put to one side the, and just carry on. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. even whether whether it was dreams or lack of sleep, whatever it was, she would yes. still carry on. But but you know? but saying saying she's still kind of but what I'm saying is how was the accuracy of the data affected under this uh, regime of pushing and putting the pressure on you all um, and the characters in the book how did that affect the gathered information was there a, was there a demise in the quality of delivery no of I don't think no. There wasn't. No. That's very interesting. No. no, I'm just, I'm just, in, I'm just intrigued. That, that was all. The, the thing that fascinated me in the book is the bit is the section you, to do. Go on. Sorry, Ian. Go ahead. You you can't be a hundred percent right all the time, obviously. Yeah. Right. But no, it it never really affected it. Right. I I get you. That's very interesting. That is very interesting. It, it, there's an also a very interesting chapter in the book, or paragraph, should as well. A whole thing that fascinated me with the Falklands and the remote viewing that the unit did regarding the Falklands. I've not seen this before anyway. Uh, I found it absolutely fascinating. Uh, the, um, the thing that I found fascinating was this uh, reoccurring out-of-body experience or dream that you were having. I'd just like to read it to the listeners. Am I okay to read it out? Because I think yeah. the listeners will be fascinated by this. Um, the dream, uh, the character is having a recurring dream all the time of a ship flying the Argentinian flag, suddenly exploding in a giant fireball of smoke and flame, and there were bodies everywhere floating in the water. Scores more people were splashing about, so it reads. 
Just read the continue. The ship was on fire with sailors running about on the deck in panic. As the ship began to sink, I found my attention focused on a young man in the water. I saw myself floating above him as I watched him struggle in the water. The look of fear strong on his face. He looked up. And to my utter astonishment, he reached up towards me, calling out the word Ayuda. I think that's pronounced uh, help. Uh, And then there's there's the shock from the character in the book that this man can actually see you. So it's like an an out of body experience that's actually uh, that's actually happening. And I just the the whole section on this. Uh, I think that might have been because he was in the throes of death anyway. He was he was he was drowning, you know. So maybe yeah, yeah. Any yeah, psychic uh, ability he had was enhanced at that particular point. Yes, yes, uh, yes. That that will make a lot of sense. It continues. I reached down to grab onto him, but our hands did not meet, and I watched as he sank beneath the water. His face and the fear in it will permanently be etched on my mind. I had mistakenly believed these dreams were the result of my tired mind, but never dreamed they could be a real event. I wisely kept quiet about the dreams for fears that Sandra, another character in the book, would think I couldn't handle the workload. And then on May the 2nd, the General Belgrano, an Argentine cruiser, was hit by a torpedo from one of our submarines and sank. The loss of life amounted to more than 300 Argentine sailors. That was when I finally realised that the dreams were in fact premonitions. What is interesting with that is the sentence... His face, it will be permanently etched on my mind. What else was permanently etched on, on the people who were involved in this unit? What else is permanently etched on their minds is uh, is my question, Irene, to you. I don't know. I can't tell you what was etched on their minds. Do you reckon, was... uh, is that because it's a secret? You do know, but you can't, you can't tell because the source isn't... <laughs> it's, you, a you, it's a book. It's a book. Yeah, <laughs> I, I know that. I, I get you. What I'm saying is, it, it, what I'm interested to know what is permanently etched on the character's mind. Is there anything else beyond all this? Is what I'm interested to know that will be etched on her mind for life. Uh, is she traumatized for life after all this? Eileen definitely is. Yeah, yeah. Um, very interesting. It's it's a very I, I, interesting. Movie. Eileen, yeah, she 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 would be definitely traumatized for life. Yeah. Uh, Matthew, yeah. not so much. Matthew. There was something strong about Matthew. Right, right. Stronger personality. Maybe it was his upbringing, his training, I don't know. Yes, yeah. It, it, it's just, it, it really is interesting. There's a thing here that says on June the 8th, uh, something strange happened where instead of viewing into the future, I saw events unfolding in real time. I saw two landing ships preparing to unload soldiers, the RFA Sir Galahad and the RFA Sir Tristram, coming under attack by three Argentinian Air Force Skyhawks. That's quite as precognitive as that, isn't it? Uh, which is, just, anyway, it's just fascinating, absolutely fascinating. And Irene, tell me, where can uh, listeners? buy your book from or even Mark tell us well the book is available right now on Amazon uh, Amazon UK and Amazon.com here in the States it's also available in a Kindle version and uh, should also soon be available in uh, bookstores absolutely excellent stuff it is is an excellent it's also also available on our publisher's website theglanatie.com Right, that's absolutely that's absolutely uh, that's absolutely fantastic. It's uh, these are the, what I've picked out, dear listener, are elements that I uh, that were etched on my mind after reading it, and the mindset involved in getting involved in all this is is absolutely uh, unbelievable. If anybody, I always uh, think, dear listener, of the uh, of the Born trilogy, and the, I think it's the Born uh, the Born Ultimatum. It's the third one where the, where they go after the journalist on Waterloo Station. And the mindset and mentality behind uh, going after that individual is is just frightening, and it it, it gives an insight does this book into all that in a way never seen before. It's the first time ever uh, I've seen anything come out uh, from the camp of British intelligence regarding remote viewing. The last time I was reading that information was in the 1600s, and uh, you know, and before in the 1500s against the Catholic Church. So it's been fascinating. Irene and Mark, thank you for coming on the Tony Topping Show. It's been a blast. And thank you. And I'm off to the lamb and flag for a pint. Are you coming with us? <laughs> okay. Thank you, Tony. All right. So catch you later, guys. Thank you, Tony. This is the Tony Topping Show. <laughs>